What up, what up, what up? Uh, today I got a uh, 0102 Ford F-150. Uh, it's got the, uh, I think it's a Triton motor, 5.4. Uh, it should be, this should be the same on basically any vehicle. Just doing a front wheel bearing. Uh, so I grabbed the tire at uh, the top and the bottom at the 12 and the six o'clock position. And uh, there was a lot of play in the tire. So whenever that happens, you just wanna get behind the tire or look behind the tire, make sure it's not the lower ball joint. Um, and usually you can you can see right at the wheel hub on the back end that there was uh, it was very loose So we're replacing the wheel bearing um, and also the rotor because one side of the rotor was getting um, Tore up really bad uh, So that was the original customer complaint here. Uh, let's take a look at the car uh, Let me get you a little light here Put you down okay, second. So, also when you get the wheel bearing, make sure when you order it, you get the right one. They do have an ABS and a non-ABS. So, uh, if you look at this one immediately, you're going to be able to tell that there is a wire going up, and it sits in that hole. So you can reach up behind it, just pull it out, and there's your clip right there. And just uh, press it down, separate it. So, uh, you can see that it was torn right here on the back side. You can see right here, see how it's like really thin on this side right here of the rotor, and this side's a lot thicker. So, it was just, you know, eating away at the metal on this back side. And, uh, let's see. Uh, basically, there's like, it's three bolts in the back. As you can see, there's three bolts in the back. You got one in the front. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you also see all the metal and stuff like that. First thing I'm gonna do, there's an 18 millimeter here. And also one right here. For the uh, caliper bolts, I'm gonna take off this caliper bracket all together. Uh, what I like to do is take a little pry bar, stick it in here up against the rotor, and then try to catch the tip of the rotor and just pull it and squeeze to, uh, get that piston these pistons pushed back inside now if you can't get it like this you can loosen up the two bolts in the back of the caliper uh because I, I like to take it off at one time instead of doing this bolt this bolt and just take the caliper off i like to take off the whole bracket i just go for the bracket because you know it's a uh, then you get to skip a step saves you a little time so just uh now if you take off the caliper bracket bolts you can pull the bracket off a little bit and then get your pry bar in there to uh, compress the caliper uh, pistons. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Take these two 18s off. So I got like a little extension here on an 18 socket, or you can use a deep one, however you wanna do it. And we're just gonna go in right here. Take out that one bolt. Try not to let it drop like that or let it hang. Uh, so I'm gonna get something to probably hang that up. There's your two bolts there. At that time, your rotor will come off. I'm uh, <clears throat> using one arm today probably for most things because I freaking ruptured my bicep tendon. Uh, it actually uh, ripped off the bone. Uh, it's picking up my girlfriend by her ankles uh, last week, so I gotta have surgery Tuesday, and they're fucking going to cut my arm open. So, uh, anyways, there's your 15, 15, and another 15 over there, and uh, we're gonna first take this out. So you gotta take out your cotter pin. And then try to pull it through this side right here. Sometimes I like to stick like a, if you can't get it, I try to stick like a pick in that little hole right there and try to pry it out. And as you can see, it's actually working here. And, um, but try to get it as straight as possible uh, so that it comes out pretty easy. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta cut them out. 
I'm gonna probably put the camera down for a second. So <clears throat> let me just put this down for a second. Okay, so we got the cotter pin out, and uh, you just pull off that little retainer right there. Just pull it right off. Uh, this right here is a 35 millimeter axle nut. Um, and then I like to push, you don't want to hit this really hard. If you do, hit it with a brass hammer. Uh, but you can stick like a Phillips head screwdriver in that hole. Bang it up a little, hit it. But you don't want to mash this front down. If you do, you will damage the threads. Or you can just put this bolt back on, you know, uh, halfway down, run it down a little bit so that you're not smashing the front of that. So when you push that back, it'll give you a lot more access to these bolts right here. And those are 15 millimeters. Uh, so what I like to do is just come here with a swivel. Got one there. Got one there. And then what I'm gonna do is turn this wheel all the way to the left now. See, I gotta turn to the right so I can get these two bolts. I'm gonna turn the wheel to the left so I can get that bolt on the back. Okay, so we got the wheel turned. And uh, I wonder if I can use my left arm to do this. Go. I'm gonna probably break that one by hand. All right, so going ahead and you know take out your wire. Like I said, it's routed up here. There's a little clip. It's gonna be in this hole right here. If you reach around the back end of it, uh, I'm gonna have to use two hands to break that off. Oh, you can see parts of the wheel bearing right there. There's the bearings right there. They all fill out. Of the old one all right and then once you uh take out this bolt this will come out it might need some uh now if you gotta if it doesn't want to come out if it's rusted what we're gonna do is have to take off the shield or just hit it right here but uh we might have to take off the shield so that i can get behind it with a chisel a lot of times when they're rusted like that you got a chisel right here right in between the wheel bearing and the steering knuckle uh, with a little flat blade chisel. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna get a breaker bar and take that one out by hand. So I'm just coming in here with a long extension right here. And uh, just doing like that. I'm about to hit it with the impact now. I can probably Take it out by hand at now. Still not gonna. Sure. Oh. Sure. Uh, bolts out. See, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to hit this with a hammer. It's not gonna want to come out. So, uh, it's gonna be the fun part. Sometimes this can be a real. So what I'm gonna do is probably, oh, see, it's starting to come right there, it's starting to separate right here. Uh, good thing to do. Uh, now you can see that wheel bearing's got a lot of play. Uh, sometimes, probably a good thing to do is turn the wheel all the way back to the right. Then you can come in this way and get a real good angle and hit it. But uh, I might just uh, do the chisel right quick. Flat blade. And uh, it's coming right here. Like so, and then I just work my way around. 
voila. There it goes. Now, there she goes. What I like to do, see all the grease came out of the wheel bearing. Uh, I just like to uh, clean this up. And probably what I'll do is straighten out the steering knuckle so it goes on flat and straight. Everything gets lined up straight. Uh, and then I'll just work, put my bolts in by hand on the back. And then uh, put a little grease here. And we'll get back to you. So uh, make made things real fast. I just hit it with some brake clean. Coming here with this wire wheel. And I just like to uh, clean off the surface because you want the wheel bearing is flat. Tilt it down. Go on the inside. Try to tilt it up or to the side or whatever. Two, two hands right there. Then I'm gonna hit that with some brake clean. Get all that crap out of there. Now, old part, new part. Now, when you put this in, you wanna make sure you put your wire right up in here in this hole. So it needs to be orientated, oriented, oriented in that fashion. So I'm gonna feed it up through here. Ugh. Get some of that crap out of there. It's all grease. So, all right. A little grease on it. Well, all right. So uh, I'm about to use two inch for this. So uh. <clears throat> Just to speed things up, I uh, put all the bolts in by hand, kind of loose, um, when it was straight, and I tightened up this one on this side, then I turned the wheel to the right, all you gotta do is tighten up the two 15s in the back, tighten up that guy right there, uh, and then, I don't know, as I was working, look what happened, like this right here just exploded, it didn't explode, but it just kind of separated, like I didn't drop it or anything but uh we got plenty of backup batteries but that's uh that sucks so uh this is the third gun i'm gonna do a review on these uh milwaukee's this is like the best of the half inch drive impacts with the, the most torque uh this is the third one that i've got uh but uh that's the first battery that messed up right there but uh this i think the first one I got, it either died in two years or four years, I forget. But I think it was like just out of the warranty period, if you do buy the extended warranty. Uh, now my snap-ons, I've got two snap-ons. Now they lasted 10 years before taking a crap. Uh, both of them, right around 10 years, they both failed. Uh, but these, I think, don't last as long as the snap-on versions. Uh, so let me go grab another battery. So, uh... <clears throat> I didn't compress the, uh, with the pry bar, I didn't compress the pistons enough with the pry bar, so I ended up did having to take off this because I put on a brand new rotor and it was way thicker. You saw that, you know, the old rotor had a big chunk missing out right here, so this is a lot thicker. I just didn't, you know, uh, use the pry bar. Use, I mean, I could have done it with the pry bar, but uh, I just didn't do it at the, t I just <clears throat> didn't do it quite enough, so, yeah, you know, just got to take off these two 13 millimeter bolts uh, so this is what most people normally do is they take this out and uh, just press this in right here with this little double piston caliper tool uh, but I was just showing you a little shortcut that's what I normally do like if I'm just replacing rotors uh, usually I will just <clears throat> use a pry bar uh, just trying to save some time 
But uh, that's all you gotta do. Put this back on right here. Put your little two bolts in right here. Put your wheel back on and you are done. And then don't forget to put in your little cap and uh, your cotter pin. Yep, that's it. So we'll... Uh, this is a 01, 02. Basically, this is, you know, this process is the same. Wheel bearings are basically all the same. If they're like a bolt in, sometimes they got either three bolts on the back or they got four bolts on the back. But this process is basically like the bl blueprint for every wheel bearing, you know, most wheel bearings. The only thing that's going to differ, sometimes they got three, three holes on the back. Sometimes they got four holes on the back for the bearing. But basically the same, you just take off your bracket axle nut three either three or four bolts in the back and then you might have an abs wire and that's it same thing for all wheel bearings. unless it's a pressed into the steering knuckle those are a pain in the butt you got to take off the whole steering knuckle press it out press a new one in um and those those really suck but uh thanks for watching the video uh don't forget to subscribe and like the videos please peace